Now, the story of Hong Kong aviation starts with Kai Tak. From its humble beginnings, it developed as an airport with a dramatic runway approach and space challenge facilities, but nevertheless became a much loved airport in Hong Kong, something that the Hong Kong people really took to their hearts. So when the decision was made by Hong Kong to move the airport from the center of the harbor to the northwest corner, this had to be done with far-sighted planning. This was so much more than just an airport. This was a rewiring of a whole city. And with the airport came new towns, bridges, rail links. And it was fully integrated into the Hong Kong fabric. And because of that, just like Kai Tak, it also became a much-loved airport, but this time through its vision, visionary design and also its efficiency. For those of us who like figures, um, these, these are some of the catchphrase numbers for Hong Kong Airport, opened in 1998. Currently, uh, a collection of buildings making an overall floor, floor area of over 850,000 square metres. I think the message here is it's just a, it's a serious player on the world stage. Surrounded by water on all sides, Hong Kong Airport is truly an island. Um, all the terminals and concourses sit comfortably between the north and south runway with uh, cargo apron services to the south. Uh, Hong Kong has enjoyed extremely steady growth through the years. Um, its passengers are up 161% from opening and something that I know Hong Kong Airport takes great pride in, cargo is up over 209% since it's opened. These are phenomenal growth figures but with growth also becomes the challenges for space. Hong Kong Airport has taken a very mature and considered approach to enhancing capacity of the existing Terminal 1 project. This is just one example, it's called the T1 Annex, uh, and Meinhardt and OTC planners are very involved in this project. It sits as a box towards the Terminal 1 um, processing, and it has extended baggage uh, reclaim uh, also has more check-in counters and increases the arrivals area. So it's a good addition to Terminal 1. Also, with the growth of passengers comes the growth of staff. This is a project designed by ADAS with uh, Mott McDonald. Uh, this, this is a building that essentially creates a community focus for the staff, a real heart for the airport for those that work there, with a very big focus on well-being. So as part of the functions, it has a creche, Hong Kong Academy, it has fitness centers, libraries, and a canteen. So something that offers a real heart and, and a community focused for the people who work in the airport. This sits on top of a new uh, car park, which is much needed space for the airport. The Sky Bridge project, a very iconic bridge. Many of you know about this. This really started life with the North Satellite Concourse, a small bus gate terminal, bus gate concourse here. This was made for 10 narrow-bodied aircraft, and the, the whole strategy of that was to release the stands, the contact stands at Terminal 1 for the wide-body aircraft to help with, with capacity issues. But with increased passenger demands becomes an increased level of service, and as such, the need to make physical contact and a physical link with the North Satellite Concourse was made. This here is the bridge link, and just like many other bridges around the, the airports around the world, this has to be built over an operational taxiway, and that has been prefabricated and designed to achieve that. Now, with Hong Kong Airport's commitment to the three-runway system, they took uh, the steps with the confidence that they took the relocation, and this has become much more than obviously just another runway. It has uh, many components to it. We have the third runway concourse up here, the Terminal 2 expansion, APM, baggage handling services. This is a holistic and confident approach to the future. It's a very ambitious program, and it will be completed by 2024. Uh, the area here, it's currently under reclamation, 
and there's uh, a huge amount of boats and machines doing their jobs out in the water at the moment. It's a very exciting place to be in Hong Kong to see this. Uh, this is something that Kevin Poole feels extremely passionate about. Unlike the original Terminal 1 and the Hong Kong Island, this will be a non-dredged reclamation and it will actually be one of the largest DCM, that's a deep cement mixing projects in the world when it's undertaken. And this demonstrates Hong Kong International Airport's real commitment to the environment during its development. That's also happening on land with all the preparatory work from new baggage handling services to APMs to the construction of new car parks around the buildings to allow for the development to commence. Now, two of the key projects for the third runway system is the Terminal 2 expansion at the top and the third runway concourse. Now, the, the Terminal 2 is an existing building and this will basically be undertaken as an adaptive reuse of the superstructure and a big expansion of the floor areas around it to turn this into a modern processor. It also acts as a gateway to the third runway concourse and by definition a new gateway to Hong Kong. So it has to have that sense of expectation and drama consummate to, to its role. Below is the third runway concourse. This is over 280,000 square metres with handling of 28 contact stands. That in itself is, is, has a lot of design challenges and opportunities, which I'll explain a little bit before. This is being designed by ADAS, with ACOM as the engineers, OTC as the planners, and Leslie Jones as the retail planners. The existing Terminal 2 is a very interesting build in its own right. It was really designed to have to, to really focus on landside retail with a small capacity for check-in. Um, what is really interesting is below, the section really tells the story. It's a very complex transport interchange and a very successful one. So as part of the redevelopment of Terminal 2, this will be maintained and enhanced. So this really shows you the, the amount of development that we're undertaking. To the left there, there's the existing Terminal 2 which we're taking down to its lower levels of superstructure. We're adaptively reusing this. This is all open car park at the moment. And this will be expanded to that full floor plate and taking the car parks to north and south buildings to maintain and increase the capacity. So let's just briefly talk about the design of Terminal 2. Now, this was the part of the brief, and I think it really shows from the client the, the pride that it has in the existing Terminal 1 building and something that as we built the new, the new chapter of Hong Kong Airport that we needed to create a building that would respect Terminal 1 but take, take it somewhere different, take it into tomorrow. So first of all, we, we abstracted the qualities of Terminal 1. What really made it special beyond just the beautiful architecture and detailing, what were the qualities that we saw there? and they're listed here, I'm sure you can read them. Um, but then we didn't just want to just dive straight into the design. We said, okay, let's take an abstraction of this. Let's look for something that also intuitively has the same qualities of T1, something that we could springboard off to create something that would have these qualities, but also in their sense, be truly unique. We found the inspiration in the feather. But that then translated practically into what was a linear ribbon roof on a 36 metre grid by over 200 metres long. Each of the ribbons is essentially a V-structure truss. So there's a rep repetition and an efficiency in the construction of the design. That ribbon roof lifts and drops depending on the passenger's movement through the building, allowing moments of height and space where we have higher dwell time. So you can see here from the drop-off towards the west that the passengers are compressed at the departing passengers, moving down the bridge and then lifting, the roof slowly lifts towards the check-in facilities and the route down, a large void here that takes passengers down onto the APM, the train, which connects them throughout to the concourse. You see how the roof drops. So it's really a responsive ribbon roof but that also has a sense of orientation and a sense of, of, of directionality and that's the qualities 
that we wanted to get into the design. Between each of the V-shaped trusses, we were able to bring naturally diffused light down into the heart of the building, again increasing that sense of orientation and directionality. Here's a sneak first peek of the T2 departures drop-off. You can see here the linear, the linear roofs sweeping down, the natural daylight diffusing between. You get a sense of arrival and a sense of order within within the departures area, but also an expectation and an intuitive orientation going into the building. On the inside, the linear strip roofs become even more evident in their function. You can see here the V-shape, which is a repetitive element right down. You see how it lifts as you move towards the east, towards the dwell areas with check-in and the APM void link where we've created another large roof light to draw light down deep into the building. The passenger bridges, the check-in counters and the linear ribbons are all on axis, giving a nice sense of comprehension to the departing passengers. So they have that sense of, of understanding of the process where they are, the lifting of the roof creates that calm space for them to dwell. So all in all, a very calm interior within the space. Now, colour Colour and vibrancy are synonymous with Hong Kong. We've overlaid the, the design of the architecture with something, again, that we want to use to create orientation within the building. Any of you who visited Hong Kong know, know it's a, a tale of two cities. During the day, it's silver, sleek and modern. And as night falls, Hong Kong comes alive with its, its second character, a city of light, of colour, of vibrancy. And that's what we wanted to interject into the design. So by projecting colour onto uh, fritted glass and to walls to use LEDs, we will be using colour projection through the building for different seasons and also to show different moments, different processes. So we've used the colour to guide the passengers intuitively through the process. When they see some of the spectrum lit onto the walls, they know they're about to enter another process. So it paces the building very subtly and very carefully. These show all the buildings sitting on the airport platform as a suite. I think they, they sit as a family, very complimentary, but also with our own DNAs. T1 is down here, and in front are T1, T2 expansion. You see the linearity talking to T1, and over here, the third runway concourse. And this, in its way, also has that linearity, that sense of comprehension. So they all sit very, very comfortably together as, as a family, but have their own characters and their own, their own qualities. And this is the new third runway concourse. ADAS are the detailed design architects for this. Uh, it's a large building, a large concourse, 280,000 square metres, and it has some really interesting features. Again, you can see the linearity of the roofs coming in, giving passengers that common sense of orientation between the buildings. Um, the courtyard here becomes a very big feature. It's an open garden park within the heart of the building, giving uh, passengers a much needed amenity. A very large hub here where the trains arrive, the APM that links through to T2. It's going to be a very exciting planned space. And there's a challenge really um, in that Terminal 1 has its process and its concourses connected together, all under one roof, all on one level. These new projects are a challenge in that the processor and the concourse is separated by a train link. There's also a lot of level changes. So it's very important as a design team, we focus on that two buildings, one experience. So with the rest of the team, we've been working on the materialities, the sequence of spaces, the volumes, the offerings within both of the buildings to create truly two buildings, but one experience. And hopefully next year, Kevin would like to reiterate that we hope we can come back together and give you the next chapter in this story. Thank you very much. Thank you, Max.